This week's episode of iFanboy is brought to you by GoDaddy.com. Enter coupon code iFanboy to get 10% off anything you buy. Domain names, domain hosting, whatever your little heart desires. Head over to GoDaddy.com to grab your own piece of the internet. Hey, we're here from iFanboy.com. I'm Josh. I'm Connor. And I'm Ron. And you can see us. It's amazing. Hi. We're here. Um, you may know us from the audio podcast we do, or from ifanboy.com, we do a pick of the week. But um, we thought we'd try this. So we get a lot of letters asking us what books we would recommend, and you know, specifically, like, what's the best DC book, what's the best Marvel book. We thought we'd start this off with just saying, like, what are the five trade paperbacks? What are the, what are the five stories you must have? And we're not ranking them or anything. It's just kind no. of, you know, what five? The five or, you have to have on your shelf. In your library, you know, and, and you got to be a comics reader if you're going to have these books. Because problem. What was the problem? Couldn't decide a five. No. No. It, it was a big argument. And we could have done this to 20. Like, what are the top 20? Yeah. And it's, then it's, it's really hard three to, hours. It's, it's hard to pick. Uh, by myself, it's hard to pick. And it's hard to get you guys to agree with my picks. But yours so. picks are terrible. Uh, okay. What's the, we, we agreed on two of them. So yes. that's not bad. That's that's some percentage, forty yeah, percent. That's good. Uh, the quick math. That yeah. was good. So uh, and they're not predictable at all. No, no, no of, yeah. it's really the Watchman. Yeah. yeah, I think it's. Oh, oh well, well, somebody's well. somebody's swinging his big I number I around. I don't fool around with the with the Watchman. <laughs> <laughs> that is the absolute edition. Yes, yeah. I just didn't bring mine. That's all. Right. <laughs> it, what what else can you say about the Watchman? I reread this about once a year. I find a lot of people do that, like because every time you go back, it's so dense. There's something else in it. The art is exceptional. It's a deep story. There's something new to find all the time. I don't think you've ever read the pirate part. No, I keep I skip it every year. You but, just read the pirate part? No, I understand that this. I mean, <laughs> it is a cliche to say Watchmen should be on it's your a, shelf. It's, it's so easy but, just to say. I mean, it's like saying Citizen Kane is one of the best movies. It, it's it, it's a cliche, it but it yeah. is, and this is one of the best. This is one of the best comic and stories. There are people out there going, I don't get book. Citizen Kane. I mean, it's a, it's a tough. It's like the people who I mean, it's, and we've and we've talked about this before. Like the people who talk about the Beatles, you know, like and who don't like to be like, how can you not like the Beatles? You yeah. know, like how can you not like Watchmen? Like, Just this because is, you're anti. This is this this probably this book marked a change in ages. You know, you got the Golden Age and the Silver Age, and this is one of the books that is the hallmark of the modern age and the comics where we're at today. You know, twenty years after it came out, I think that we wouldn't have the comics we have now without Watchmen. I think it just, it changed the way people looked at comics. So. Okay. Well, that's probably has a lot to do with this, the other book we agreed on. Yes. And we're really swinging for the fences here, just I... find, pulling something out from the basement that you wouldn't expect. The Dark Knight Returns. Note mine. This is from... Yours is haggard. Mine, this is old. Yours is very This old. is almost probably 20 years old. His this old this one is not so old. It's a replacement from probably 10 years ago, because the other one fell apart. And then I got this one. Ooh, look at that. Which is the hardcover. Did you steal that from the library? I got it off eBay. You like somebody totally stole, stole that from the library. library. Look at the plastic. My mom worked at the library, and that's what they use. Well, that's where I got it off eBay. He may have stolen it. And then there's this oh, one. Oh, well, look at that. Thanks. Look at him again. Someone's overcompensating, I think. Someone, well, somebody's got a credit card bill. There are... There's a big problem with that one, though, isn't there? What, that the... It's got both in it, doesn't it? Well, yeah. <laughs> um, this... There's certain works that warrant this treatment, the the ultimate or the absolute treatment, yeah. <laughs> and it's it's certainly this and it's certainly Watchmen. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and this is also along with Watchmen, the same era, which is what changed. This is another book that changed. In the beginning comics. of the modern age. Yeah. As I flip through this, this happens every single time. Like I remember, like all these. Like you look at one page and you're like, oh yeah, that page yeah. and that panel. Like there's just so many things that I remember. There's no other stories I can think of that have so many of those images. Where every time you like. There's the black silhouette of Superman with the red cape, and there's you know just so and the, you know him with the gun falling out of the the, yep. the helicopter. It's a good book. I mean, it it, it totally. What the heck? I was never really a big Batman fan until I read this book. And this, yeah. yeah. And I also, to be honest, I didn't understand. I didn't get the Frank Miller thing until I read this book. I, I really think you know. Then I went back and I got Daredevil and I got all that kind of stuff. It was a great gateway drug. Oh. And that just looks beautiful. And yeah. they're also the best action figures to ever come out of anything. Were We're not cool. talking about that, yeah, though. No, no. Sorry. And the cosplay is like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> um, <laughs> all right, so now here's where we get into the murky waters. Get into the, the, the third, right, fourth, give and me, give me, Give me another one of yours. Well, I have to. I mean, my, my personal number one is the Dark Phoenix Saga trade paperback of the X-Men, Uncanny X-Men. Issues, I don't remember what issues they were uh, off the top of my head. Um, this is... My haggard copy that I purchased in seventh grade, and you can tell by the ripped page where I ripped off a piece of paper for a bookmark. You, you've oh, changed. Wow. I've cha oh, I've changed. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was just oh, it's, oh, it's, just just out. Out. it's falling apart as we speak. Look at the old Marvel Comics logo. 
Mine was um, older than this. I didn't have yeah. the uh, Dark Phoenix bit at the top. It was just... Um, this... I was just getting into the X-Men when I picked this up. I picked this up, I think, in California on a soccer field trip. Like I was on a, on a tournament. And I read it on the plane, and it blew me away. I mean, to say that it blew me away is an understatement. I, I gotta, I gotta tell you, give you that's probably the preeminent like, any your, any Marvel story. Yeah. You should probably read that one. Yeah, absolutely. I disagree with this because I don't. I feel like if it's, if it's a trade paperback, I should think of it first as a trade paperback, and I don't think of Dark Phoenix first as a trade paperback. That's semantics. No, it's that's a, that's my it's my a story. List. It's a I mean, story. I feel like. Um, Wait, are you certain, talking about graphic novel or trade paperback? Either one, either or. Why is it not a trade paperback? Because I don't think of I think of Dark Phoenix as a series of. We should have started issues. this before we started recording. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Well, we'll move on. Well, no, that's, like that's why I disagree with, with yeah. it being on the list because I don't feel well, like. Then it's we have to take the rest of his. Well, out. so then, so then, what's your what do you choose? From hell is good. From hell. I it mean, good. this. Uh, so does Alan spare. Moore send you checks directly? Yes, or? he does. Yeah, okay, yeah. This this is a, one of the few comics that actually scared me. <laughs> The like the story is really scary, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's it's so well researched and so authentic, and it's it's good, it's, and it's graphic, and it's violence. Eddie Campbell goodness too. And to me, um, that's about as most literate. Like if you ever want, like if anybody ever says, "Well, comics are like that's yeah. like, oh yeah, that's for kids." Try getting through it. My problem with it though, now that I have a problem with it, I love it, and you know how much I loved it and how much it blew me away. If I had to pick five on a desert island, I'm not taking it. Really? Yeah. It just mm. boils down to that. I mean, it's in, maybe it's in my top ten. It's not my top five. But this is hours of hours oh, yeah. of. I know. If you like, only have five books in this island, you want you don't want to take one that's like this thin. You want right? Yeah, exactly. Because you end up talking to. I understand. But but isn't if, that one on your list? I didn't. My list is on Desert Island. His is, his is apparently. I see. Crazy. Oh, his is, he's got the Desert Island. Moving right. on. The Desert Island. Moving on. I'm just gonna kiss some more creator this, ass. Yeah. Oh wow! So Frank Miller sends you checks directly. <laughs> he does. I'm not even like a giant Frank Miller fan. I don't love Sin City or anything like this. Yeah. To me, like if you want to talk about an artistic graphic novel. 300, and this is, I'm saying this before the movie comes out and everybody knows about it, I've had this, like, this was the one graphic novel I wanted to have forever, because it's a standalone story, they're reprints of issues, I don't know how you feel about that, but no, every, things you don't think of it as, you think of it as one whole. Every page is gorgeous. It's huge. It's, the way that it's laid out, You know what I think is really interesting, because it didn't come out in that format when it came out in issue form, right? No, no, no the, the issues, in, it, the, the page would be split yeah, this way. Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. So, everything is a double page spread. That's awesome. The, the coloring is as nice a coloring as yeah. there exists yeah. in comics, and yeah. it's just like one perfectly formed story. That's really nice. I've never actually seen that format. So oh, this I mean, book I saw is... it on the shelf. I've never actually seen it. You don't it. own this? I own it in issue. I bought it in issues. The book. Oh, no, I know. Well, okay. I yeah. actually, you have to store it like this, though, right. because if you go like, like this, the pages book. fall out sideways. Yeah. That is a good one. That yeah. is a good one. Why don't you hit us up with another one? What else all right, all right, all right. What do I got? Cache I go. All right, well. Are you going to get serious on us? Moment of silence. No, that's horrible. Um, no, this is a book that, this is literally, this is a, mine. I, mine, I got Art Spiegelman to sketch a mouse Connors is falling apart. This is not on the list, but I have it out simply to show that it's so good that the, it is falling apart, Whoa. literally. This um, is a book that you can give to anybody at any time if you want to say, what's the power of the graphic novel? I want a Pulitzer. No one needs to say that stuff, but if you haven't read it, like... Well, it's taught in college classes you, as a literary yeah, work. Yeah. You, you need to. This is just the first volume. I have the yeah. second one around this here is the, This is the collection. Yeah. yeah. This is just... It's awesome. It's good. It's tear jerking and, and beautiful. What do you got? Poignant. Well, what, what's your last one? I'm going through them. Yeah. I decided to go uh, box office poison. I, I really wanted to do it's like good. like like the things that show all the different things comics can do. We talked about some of the superhero stuff, and this is a story about people. And this to me reads like a slightly more intelligent Kevin Smith movie, or it's a very slice of life kind of book about people in their real lives as you get after you get out of college and you're growing up. I devoured this book in a moment and I couldn't stop I think the cartooning in it is great Alex Robinson's Box Office Poison um, it's, it's good I'll give Alex Robinson yeah. I'll give you that credit it's not one of the best of all time it, it, and if I'm, go- if I'm going with the black and white independent kind of relationship thing Strangers in Paradise be- blows away Box Office Poison it's not as humorous and it's not as you know kind of um, that's the word I'm looking for kind of um, I don't know I'm blanking I right. only have to go but, and buy this though if right. I want to read Strangers sure. in Paradise. Well, no, well, actually, I'm singling it out to Volume 2, I Dream of You, which, which encompasses everything of the romance, of the mystery, of the intrigue, of a little bit of, a little bit of humor. It kind of has everything. Like, if you only read one Strangers in Paradise trade, then I would recommend I Dream of You. Can you read that without reading the first one? Yes. Yeah, but Absolutely. you left at the end, like, what happens? Well, so but so, some, so do you do on an episode of, of General Hospital. I mean, like, Terry Moore draws his ass off. Yes, he does. He, uh, just because you're flipping through the pages, I'm like, yeah. bah. So I mean, I, I would, I like Box Office Poison, but I think. So why, Josh? Why do you pick 
box office poison over Strangers with Paradise because I know you like Strangers with Paradise. I, I'm thinking of in terms of if like there's a story that you have to go out there and read. Like this is a great story. This is a yeah. book you can give to anybody and, and it's good and they appreciate it and it's great. What I think is interesting what just came to my mind was that you, you're talking about it from hell because it's big, thick, and contained and this is like a phone book and a lot of mine are a little more thinner than they are and they're more serialized. Mm-hmm. On that desert and, island, you're going to run out of time. Well, no, but... but and you're going to be like, what but happens? But the thing is is that the emotions that, that came out of me for these books compared to the emotions that came out of those, I'm going by like which ones give me the biggest emotional response sure. and which ones give me the biggest kind of reaction. So what's the last one? My last one is... Well, wait, if you want to talk about emotional response, this book had me in the bed like this. Well, that's because you're a crazy cat. That's I am. Yeah. Um, but it's also in the term of emotional response, my last one would be Marvels by Kurt Busiek and Alex Ross. I know Alex Ross, whatever. But this is the first big Alex Ross kind of one, and it's all painted art, and it tells this, the beginnings of the Marvel Universe from the eyes of a, photo- of a newspaper photographer. I don't know, there's an old sticker from my zine. And, um, <laughs> and, <laughs> he loves and, it so much he hasn't read it since college. And... Um, it just really, it really brings out the, the, the heart of the Marvel Universe in, through a different point of view. I think I need to read that again. Yeah, very good. I, I want to get the heart. I want to get. I want to. I want them to do an absolute or a omnibus version of this. Well, there's a hardcover. Yeah, but I want that. Yeah, I, you version. want the oversized. Because after seeing the omnibus of Alias, like I want omnibus. Right. Well, let's talk about that. This one, this was a late, late pick for me. I didn't have it on my original list that we talked about, and I pulled it out this morning. Yeah. So I'm surprising to, um, two of you, but. I've been rereading this, and I haven't read it since this has been out. And as a as a self contained story, this is fantastic. I just reread all those in there. I mean, yeah. I, I hadn't read it all contained. I'd read it as it came out monthly. And, I didn't know um, on the back was all the covers. Though. Yeah, on the back was all the covers, but I take the slip covers off when I read it. So, uh, so. Well, if, and if reading this, yeah, if you do it in mind, <laughs> I was you, awkward for me. If you read it all together. <laughs> It's, it's, it's even better. I mean, it was, it was a great monthly yeah. series, but reading it together all, it was like a novel. How scary is the Purple Man? It, it's, it's, I love the Bagley section. I love the flashbacks and stuff. I love the, the use of art. And Ga- I love Gatiss' art. This too. might be Bendis' best work. It might be. I mean, it's a, a, a really strong argument. Contained. Yeah. yeah, I agree. I definitely agree. He loved it. You could tell. I mean, it has a beginning, a middle, and an end. Yeah. And who knows if it was planned that way, but it ends up being and that's it's, the case. It's a very adult story in uh, that superhero kind of world. Yeah, it's, it's not an adult in terms of pornography. It's an adult in terms well, of there's a lot of adult. Well, well, but that's that's yeah, you being can't adult. see penetration. Luke Cage, Luke Cage. You know, no one's clear what's happening there. There's a lot of adult emotions, and you don't see, yeah. ever see superheroes dealt with in this adult way. Yeah. Let's look at Thor. Ah, move on. All right, so. I, I was... Your last one? I decided my last book would be different than the other four because the, if you look at the other four, they're very Whimsical. heavy. Whimsical. They're very, they're very dark. Yeah. Adult. They take you in, in, in disturbing places. And put, see, this is Invincible, which is about as undark, and, although it contains... It gets there. It contains heavy moments. This is, for the most part, just fun superheroing. And, and self-contained, not bogged down by anything. You right. Know, like this is, you, totally you walk into this first unique. volume without any knowledge and you have the time of your superhero life. And this is... Just up and down. This is the best superhero comic being done today. Currently, the best superhero comic, and this this is yeah. just fun. Definitely, agree. and that's I wanted an antidote to my dreary pile over here. Yeah. So we did an awful job of coming up with the, the top five that you need. We've got about top. 12. Top. This is more like top fifteen. So how how do we how do we how do we resolve that? Well, <laughs> well, clearly you were wrong. Well, <laughs> well, do either of you agree on Dark Phoenix? I can, no, I, I, can, I can I can understand it. You can understand. But I, you think don't agree. A, I think is I think is I wouldn't bring make it my top five. I okay. wouldn't give it to somebody. Okay. I, I think it's a, love it's that a, cop. It's a seminal <laughs> X Men story for sure. I just, it's a seminal Marvel story. Yeah. Is that the best X Men story? If I had to pick one X Men story, that's. The if one you one. want to go from an era, if you want to take something out of the seventies and eighties, like what's the story that mattered the most? Yeah. What's the more story that changed? Well, I can see it. Claremont and Byrne, you it's, know, it, in their it, prime. It exemplifies the era. Mm-hmm. I can give you that. I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't take box office points. All right, so we do this all the time <laughs> on the podcast, which you can download from iTunes or at ifanboy.com, where you can come and talk to us and tell us what we did wrong. A lot of great discussion on ifanboy.com, so check it out. Um, and hopefully we'll be catching us again next week. And you can e- email us at contact at ifanboy.com if you, you want to send in a question. Bye. Bye.